So in a previous video, we showed you how to use the Sonoff S31 to do your laundry notifications. Hey, guess what? The dryer is done. Exciting stuff, right? But for a lot of people, you can't use this plug on the dryer due to being multi-phase dryer or simply not working with the plug on this Sonoff S31 or other power monitoring plugs. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a split core current transformer that will be placed on the dryer. We'll use a screw terminal, capacitor, a couple resistors, and don't worry, we will show a version without any soldering because we'll be making it up on a breadboard like this with a Wemos D1 Mini. The end result is this. You'll simply power it through USB and connect the split core current transformer to the two terminals and we'll flash it with a custom Arduino sketch and get the dryer electric draw over MQTT to feed all your various automations. We'll also show a soldered version for the ones that are a little more handy and get back to the roots of the DIY part of this channel. So let's get to it. Being this is a DIY project, there's going to be quite a few links on the various products such as the SCT, the various capacitors, resistors, etc. You can build it your kind of your own way. There's going to be a hundred different ways to build this and I'll leave the schematics. You don't have to build it exactly like I did. So a couple things. Typically when you order the Wemos D1 Mini, they don't come soldered with the pins on them already. And, and I know we're not we're gonna do a non-solder version. So if you're comfortable using the Wemos D1 Mini and soldering the pins on, by all means, go ahead. There is the ESP8285 version of this, looks like a Node MCU board, but you'll notice it's a little shorter. And it will fit on one of these proto boards. And you can take these proto boards and hook them together. So to give you more room and still should be able to fit it in the case if you would cut a hole in the side for your USB cable and your core transformer cable. But of course you can use any case you like, you can use any size, but you're going to have to adapt to what you need and fits your case that, and your boards that you choose. So in this build I chose these preformed jumper wires. You can use other type of jumper wires on the breadboard but it does tend to get a little messy looking and they can easily come out. These preformed wires will fit on the breadboard. Just choose the size that you need and they will stay put. So you could use this as a permanent installation. So if you're not familiar with the breadboards, the way a breadboard works is each row such as these pins here on this will all have continuity together. So these will be connected, the next row will be connected. Now this row does not connect to this row here. These, it is isolated per side. So if a pin comes into here, it will be connected to this one here. And you can see this jumper, I'm jumping from this row over to this one. And what this pin is to correspond with the Wemos D1 Mini is 3.3 volts pin will go in here that's fed in through the USB and 3.3 volts jumps on this white wire over to this row and since these are connected together this jumps into this 10k resistor and jumps into this row which this is bridging across from each side of the breadboard this terminal is, is for the split core current transformer this 10K resistor ties into the negative side of the Wemos. Because you see, we're using the second row here, which is the second pin, which is ground. So ground will jump down to here. It will go to the negative pin on the 10 microfarad capacitor, which you can tell on this capacitor, the stripe side is the negative. So this negative ties into here and jumps over to the positive from the Wemos D1 Mini. What this does is create a type of 
voltage divider for the split core transformer. There's tons of different ways you can build this and you, if you're handy enough with soldering, you can build even a smaller version of this, such as I've done here. I would utilize DuPont jumper wires for a positive 3.3 volts in. I would use negative here. It utilizes the same two 10K resistors, the same 10 microfarad capacitor. It's the same exact thing, it's just on a smaller board. And we bridge several of the pins on the underside to connect and use this small board instead of having to use a breadboard. There's tons of different ways to build this, so whatever you choose, there is no wrong way to do this as long as you build it electrically the same as we've done here on this breadboard or this proto board with soldering. Definitely, if you have some other ideas and different changes you want to do that maybe you think is better than what I've done here, by all means, go ahead and be sure and share it to us in the comments. We'd love to see the different ways of building this. So there are several of these type of split core current transformers. This one we're using is a 30 amp, one volt output. There is what they call a burden resistor built into the unit itself, which makes it a little bit safer given if you unplug it with the current being drawn through it. And also you don't have to put a burden resistor on your breakout board. So if you don't use this type, you will need to incorporate a burden resistor, which there's several different pages that can help you calculate the burden resistor. So this one typically comes with like a headphone type jack on them and strip the wires back. You can easily put these in a screw terminal. So on this setup, the white wire is gonna go in the one on the right and the red wire is gonna go on the one on the left. I'd like to thank Jim from Pennsylvania. He was the inspiration to get me to make this video and show everyone with the electric dryers on how they could use this. So in these photos, we're showing here the split core transformer being installed in the dryer. It is imperative that you unplug the dryer before you open up any of the inspection panels and get to the plug. So definitely make sure, double check, triple check that you've unplugged the dryer before you attach the split core transformer. In the US, there are two legs of the dryer. The motor is typically only hooked up to one of the legs. And if the dryer is on a cycle where it's not utilizing the heating element, it could cause false triggers on your automations because you won't get the current output that you're looking for. So make sure in, when you're testing this to put the dryer on just like an air fluff mode only and see if you get the current draw from the motor itself that turn, is turning the drum of the dryer. And also you'll want to take note of the arrows on the top of the SCT. The arrows should be facing the electric current as it flows from the wall to the dryer. If you don't get it right, you can always just flip it over and put it on the correct way. As these just simply pop open and you can close them, they're non-invasive, you're not hacking the dryer and you can take it off the dryer very easily. One thing to note, some people have also installed these clamps on their electric panel itself next to the breaker box. You can do that but I would highly recommend that you consult an electrician before you start digging in your electrical box as it could kill you instantly digging in the breaker box itself. Because in most breaker boxes, even though if you turn off all the breakers, there's still gonna be power up at the top of the feed of the breaker box that you can't turn off unless you actually go pull the electrical meter outside. So definitely, again, consult an electrician if you're going to plan on installing this inside your electrical panel. So now that you have your unit built with the Wemos D1 Mini or using the ESP8285, or you can also use the ESP8266. Since these pins come pre-soldered, whichever you like, that's all your choice. Now we need to go download the sketch and compile this and get it flashed for your setup. So if you're already familiar with the Arduino IDE, you can skip past this section of the video straight to where we download the code and compile it and flash it to the Wemos D1 Mini. For those that don't have Arduino IDE installed, let's run through it really quick. It's pretty simple to do. 
don't be scared when we say compile code. You're just gonna be changing a few things and hitting flash and send it straight over to the Wemos D1 Mini. So first you need to go to the Arduinos.cc. We'll leave the links for all this in the description of the video. You'll need to download the Arduino IDE 1.88. You need to download the Windows zip file for non-admin install. So you just download. Once it downloads, you'll need to extract this to a folder. Once you have it extracted to a folder, you need to make a new folder inside here called Portable. Then we'll open the Arduino EXE. Next, we need to go to Preferences. Under additional board manager URLs, we'll paste this address in, which we'll leave in the description. Click OK. Under tools, go to board and board manager. We'll search for ESP8266. We'll change the version number to 2.30. If you'd like to try the other core versions, you're more than welcome to but I chose 2.30 as it was the most stable for my setup. Click install. Wait for it to download the boards. You'll click close. And after this, you'll see in boards, you have the extra boards. Towards the bottom, we'll choose the Wemos D1 Mini. We'll leave these default settings. Once we plug the board in, it will give us a port number to use. Next, you'll need to go to Manage Libraries, and we'll search for Emon Lib, the Open Energy Monitor. Click Install. Next, we'll need to go download two files from GitHub. The first one's going to be the Async MQTT client. Click the green button on the right, hit Download, Download Zip. We'll also need ESP Async TCP for the ESP8266. Click the green button, hit download. Next, we'll need to import these libraries into our Arduino IDE. You go to Sketch, Include Library, Add Zip Library, and browse to the location of the two zip files you just downloaded. We'll install Async MQTT Client, hit Open. It says library added. Go back and we'll include the next one. We'll install the ESP Async TCP. Hit open. Next, you'll need to download the Digi Dryermon code from GitHub. Click the green download link. Download zip. You need to extract that to a folder and rename sample config to just config. We'll go back to Arduino IDE, the file, and open and browse to folder you were just in. You'll open digidryermon.ino. Hit open. If you get this message, it needs to be inside a sketch folder named digidryermon. Hit create this folder. Hit OK. Now one thing you'll notice, if you don't have a tab up here with the config.h, you will need to move that file as well. So we'll close this, and we'll move the config.h into the digidryermon folder. So you should have two files inside this folder. Now we'll open this with Arduino again. This time you should have the config.h tab. You'll need to go ahead and enter your Wi-Fi SSID, your Wi-Fi password, your MQTT host, your MQTT username, and your MQTT password. You can change these other IDs. There is a page that can send over an OTA bin file through the web browser, and also there's the OTA through Arduino. You're more than welcome to change these IDs and passwords. So at this point, make sure and go to Tools, that you have the board, the Wemos D1 Mini, or if you're using the Node MCU, you'll select the Node MCU towards the bottom. 
you can leave the upload speed but for reliability reasons I prefer to use the 115 200 leave everything else default and we can go ahead and plug in our Wemos D1 Mini now you can see port is enabled select the COM port that appears for your Wemos or Node MCU and then hit the upload button it'll say compiling sketch give it some time it may take a little bit of time varying based on your computer should get the uploading message the dots appearing should get the 100% message next thing we'll go to tools click on serial monitor make sure this is set to 115 200 if you don't see any output from the Wemos or the node MCU if you power cycle by unplugging the USB and plugging it back in simply close the serial monitor open the serial monitor again and if you push the reset button you should see the information connect it shows it connects to MQTT it shows the IP address if you want to see this log through telnet it is a read only telnet so you cannot type back to it and you should see the results and it reads every 10 seconds and you'll notice here it indicates on the LED when it's reading the current now let's hook up the SCT to a load so now I've got this connected to a load all I have is a simple test circuit box that I normally use and I put the SCT on the just the hot wire make sure you do not put it over the common as well otherwise you won't get any readings you can only put it on one side so we got our light pulsing showing us reading and we got the serial output showing the current I've got it connected to a hot iron that will pull a small load for us to do some testing so we'll turn it on and you can see already that the current has changed and it publishes that new value to MQTT and again every 10 seconds it's going to continue to read that value if it meets the certain delta it will publish that value to MQTT one thing to note if you are using a different clamp you can adjust the calibrations for the Emon lib library in the sketch as you flash it and you can also change this delta as well as how often it will pull the sensor so we'll turn this off and you see the value drop back down so let's check this out in home assistant in your configuration YAML in Home Assistant, you'll need to add three sections, and we will leave these to copy and paste in the description of the video. Your state topic may be a little bit different because these last six characters are from the MAC address of the Wemos or the Node MCU. If you do a reset on your unit and watch the serial monitor, it will show you the exact topic name to use. This will allow you to use multiple of these in your home instead of just using one and you can use the same exact sketch per unit so I've got we got the current it does use the LWT so if you have it off the last will and testament it will show the unit as unavailable you also have the Wi-Fi signal and then optional we will show the build which shows the IP address and when you compiled it so once you save that and do your check config and you go and add that to your home assistant GUI and add it to a card should look something like this so you've got the current you got the Wi-Fi signal and then the status and you can name these however you like that's just the names I chose and you do again have the IP address and this is optional of course and if you did want to actually do some wattage calculations if you had some other devices that had the voltage you could do a template sensor and calculate the wattage based on the amount of voltage you have in your home so let's check it out we'll turn on that hot iron again and you see automatically it populates this sensor and home assistant and of course since this is MQTT you could read this using node red and any other type of system that uses MQTT to read values and utilizing the current value you can do an automation like we did in the previous video using the Sonoff S31, but using this and use your voice notification to tell you when your dryer turned off. So that's all there is to it. Got your SCT, and your Wemos D1 Mini. Might to make you a little case, figure out something, but this is what it's about doing DIY 
It's a cheap little project to monitor your electric dryer and any other appliance you might like to monitor in Home Assistant or Node Red or whatever home automation system you're using. If you don't already have one, definitely pick you up a pen tester. It's a non-contact pen tester to when you're working with mains electricity. You can always make sure that the lines are cold before you touch anything. It could definitely save your life one day. So thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, definitely become a subscriber and click the bell icon so you can check out our next video. And y'all take care.